tonight, Estelle continues to weaken in the Eastern Pacific, with nothing else on the radar at this time. Now the latest around the wide world of tropics. So, 36th storm of the year, Estelle. Uh, earlier it was a hurricane, now weakening as it ventures out towards the hostile eastern Pacific open waters, where it will get strangled by dry air and its effects already appearing to be taking its toll on the storm. Well, let's look around the Atlantic though first. Well, we have no areas of interest active on day 50 of hurricane season already. It's gone by quickly, hasn't it? We've had three storms there so far, but we've not got anything on the horizon yet, although there is something possible in the longer range. In the eastern Pacific, Estelle's there, uh, way out at sea and moving further away from land, and we've got an area of interest there at 20% right now that could develop into our next tropical cyclone. We'll take a look at that properly on the models a little bit later on, on day 67 of hurricane season there. In the western Pacific, there's still no areas of interest right now, so it's been a pretty dormant start to the year overall in the western Pacific, despite the strong typhoons that we've already seen, interestingly enough, but nothing active today. And in the Indian Ocean, no areas of interest here either. I know we had that low pressure system that was off the coast of Gujarat a few days ago, but some are debating whether it was a tropical depression or not. Good question, I've not come to my own conclusion yet either. Well let's take a look at some satellite imagery across the Atlantic Ocean right now, and you can see it's extremely dr dominated by dry air just now. Uh, the only convection, proper convection really, occurring over Florida, the Florida Peninsula, into the southwestern, southeastern United States. Uh, off the coast though, there's that other system there, the usual frontal stuff over the uh, Gulf Stream. Uh, and then looking at the eastern Pacific, you can see uh, that next system possibly emerging along the coast there. And obviously you can make out Estelle. It's uh, shrinking quite a bit, but it's got a sturdy band extending way towards its south. And as we look at the latest floater imagery, or close-up imagery, it's titled floater on my uh, thing here, but it isn't actually really a floater. But anyway, uh, there it is. You know, it's got some decent rotation, uh, but it is lacking and struggling a little bit with that convection. Um, and there's a lot of dry pockets all around the storm right now. Um, but, you know, it looks decent. It's something to look at right now on satellite imagery when we're struggling to look at anything else in the tropics just now. Um, but its track is pretty set in stone that it will just move out to sea and will start, will continue weakening. Um, we'll probably be no more in maybe a day, uh, but most likely in two days from now. Looking at the Western Pacific, this is how it looks there right now. And you can see there's a few little things that might start to require some rotation there. Um, indeed, one of them GFS is eyeing up might be that area of uh, area of cloudiness to the east of the Mariana Islands or even the ones to the northeast. We'll wait and see what comes out of that. Philippines, a little bit of precipitation there and along the coast of Vietnam. Looking towards the Indian Ocean right now, you can see the current situation there. It's uh, pretty dry over India just now. A little bit of uh, moisture along the east coast and down over Sri Lanka and over the open ocean and down in the southern hemisphere. Things are pretty quiet here at the moment. Uh, a bit of convection over the Coral Sea, a massive front uh, signature that extends all the way down towards New Zealand, but a pretty normal uh, picture to be looking at right now. So sea surface temperatures are on the rise still, and they'll keep rising. I mean, we say this every time, uh, but they keep rising to their peak, which is usually in around September. Uh, there's a lag delay behind the longest day of the year um, as to sea surface temperatures, uh, which is even longer than the delay for the highest land temperatures. Uh, but in the Atlantic there it is rising substantially still, 30 degrees plus in the Gulf of Mexico quite comfortably, and off the coast of Florida along the Gulf Stream, which extends that 26 degree ton there a very long way. 
Indian Ocean, still warm generally, 30 degrees pushing. And in the uh, Western Pacific, temperatures still looking good there as well and extending very far to the north now as you look at that imagery. Zooming out, you can see just how far it extends towards South Korea, 26 degrees Celsius, uh, and way up the coast of eastern China, and now for a significant chunk of Japan. So the Western Pacific's really getting warmed up and in gear, ready for the typhoon season. We're just needing the storms, really. Uh, and the anomalies, it's above average over there for pretty much all of the Western Pacific. East Pac is a uh, hit and miss. Uh, but the La Nina effect in the Eastern Pacific is certainly uh, dying off a bit. It's over the Central and Western Pacific, really. The Atlantic over average in the Gulf and in the Western Caribbean and in the MDR, the places that matter. Oceanic heat content continues to uh, creep upwards, particularly in the Caribbean Sea. Any storms that find themselves there will have very good odds of uh, rapidly intensifying. Eastern Pacific, there's a few little blobs here and there, but there's not much to speak of, really. And in the Western Pacific, it's expanding northwards there, a nice little chunk off the coast of Taiwan. Well then, let's take a look at some computer models right now, and I've no idea what I'm looking at at the moment, because the software's decided that it's not going to tell me uh, or show me what we're supposed to be looking at. And we've got a few... Um, models up today so I can't remember what it was supposed to be showing either. I imagine that this will be showing us uh, Estelle and what happens to it which is probably not which is not really very much at all it dies off and then you see that next system that starts forming off the coast of Mexico and becomes I think it was a tropical storm and in the Western Pacific this is what the GFS has at the moment uh, a storm forming near the Mariana Islands and then shooting off northwards uh, and possibly becoming a typhoon on approach to Japan before weakening again uh, before it gets there. Uh, I guess you can get storms like this at this time of year but it is not yet supported by any other computer model which is why it doesn't yet appear on our outlook. And disappointingly I can't see that either. It's just going to be me complaining during this because it's, nothing's working. In the longer range, this actually is working now, uh, the Atlantic uh, main development region. This is what we were talking about, day 5 to 10. You can see this potential tropical storm there. That's the 28th that it forms. Uh, doesn't last very long there. Um, it continues as a depression at the end of that uh, run. Uh, that would be day 10, the 30th, so only a two-day tropical storm that would be and not particularly strong fairly small it's what you'd expect for the time of year down in the MDR a fairly weak uh, beginning there uh, Eastern Pacific so you can see two new systems that try to form after was it after Estelle or after the next storm uh, but you'll know you can see these two systems and that last one there uh, I think that's the third system becoming a hurricane uh, and quite a strong one at that as it moves along the coast of Mexico but uh, a significant distance away from land much like the paths of the other storms that we've had for much of this month it's been a wave train that's been developing all the time and that's what you get in the eastern pacific usually in the Western Pacific, GFS wants a second system to spin up uh, towards the end of that 10-day period, again on the 28th, and uh, stall off the coast of Japan there as a tropical storm and hold its intensity. Uh, so that would be an interesting track if that were to happen, and who knows where it might go next. I'll have the answer for you in a moment. But that's all the serious stuff done for the next 10 days. It's time for me to introduce to you once again the Force 13 merch store, which you can take a look at, and uh, you can even uh, take a look at some of our Hone merchandise, uh, which is still out there on special offer after our 1,000 days of Hone, um, of not having Hone. Uh, which we're still waiting for. Okay, out into Silly Range, you can see that system again in the Atlantic. It does survive, uh, but then degenerates into a wave again, and then its influence continues on towards uh, the Caribbean. You can still track it all the way through to the Gulf of Mexico there uh, for a potential redevelopment, but uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know about that really, and towards the end of that loop, <coughs> potentially something forming along the Gulf Stream. And I forgot to mention about the merch store regarding animations. You can request animations on demand on there now as well. Full seasons and individual storms. How exciting. Over in the Eastern Pacific, so we've got Storm 1 and Storm 2 after Estelle there, I believe it is. 
And then you can see that second one becoming a significant hurricane for a second time and really ballooning in size. Look at that. Um, so that's a quite a remarkable feature. Uh, but once again, it is extremely long range. It ends up growing to about four times its size there. Um, it's not the map complexion. It's uh, really massive swelling of that storm. Uh, but it is in the very long range. So I would pay not the blind bit of notice to that. As for that little spitty thing off Japan, it continues to stall for several more days and then becomes a typhoon. And then where does it go? It's finally deciding to go north. There it is, going through Shikoku and then western Honshu and then still a tropical storm on the other side. So a typhoon landfall there, I believe it was, after it took ages and ages to make its mind up. 30th of July that run started. When does it make landfall? August the 3rd, so it spends about six days there in the same position pretty much. Meanwhile, back on this day, on July 20th, 1986, long time ago I know, but it was a similar situation, although not really. Estelle was active again, but this time it was a Category 4 out there in the Eastern Pacific. Uh, it was around its peak intensity today uh, and eventually into tomorrow as well before starting to simmer down as it approached the Hawaiian Islands. We also had an unnamed tropical storm, quite rare in the Western Pacific, uh, even back then. Uh, but that was just off the coast of China there, off uh, Hainan Island, and would end up moving inland towards the northwest in the typical fashion. Well then, uh, after that dodgy narration on the Tropical Weather Bulletin. We've made it towards the end here with Estelle being a Category 1 hurricane on our sheet here. The next name in the Atlantic is Danielle in the Eastern Pacific. It's Frank and in the Central Pacific we're still waiting for Hone, obviously. In the Western Pacific we might soon get Songda and in the North Indian Ocean the next name will be Sitrang. Um, I'm not sure we showed it on the models, but we should have done. Uh, there's supposed to be a North Indian Ocean cyclone on the medium range, I think it was, on the GFS. Uh, so if we did uh, not show you that, then uh, my apologies, because we should have done. Uh, but I couldn't see anything during that model period because it was all breaking down. Anyway, we'll see you again tomorrow for the next Tropical Weather Bulletin. <laughs> <laughs>